All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. There's been heartache and pain. I don't know if I can face it again. Hey, Sandra. Can't stop now. I've traveled so far to change this lonely life. I want to know what love is. Hey, yeah. What's up, Missing? How you doing? I want to feel what love is. I know you can show me. I want to know what love is. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Today we're talking about um, love versus lust, okay? So let me invite a couple of people in here. I know you can show me. And as always, um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Midora Perrier. I'm a certified life and relationship coach and student of psychology. And um, I specialize in the nine laws of health, uh, which are immutable. And they're not like the law of the people like, uh, you got to spray your house and you can't go outside. Not, not them kind of laws. No, no, no. no, no, no. These laws are immutable for the law, uh, before the law came. Um, you know, these, these laws were existence in existence at the time of Adam and Eve, you know, okay, like gravity. There we go. They're immutable. All right. So, um, let me, okay, so I'm done by inviting people in. Hello, Evelyn. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Y'all hold on. I thought I had my remote for the sound system. I want to talk about Yes, well, the song's over. Just one way, when you can't find the remote, just snatch the plug out. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. So today we're talking about love and lust, right? Love versus lust. Oh, there is no competition anyway. But we're coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay, because um, um, I'm going to be going over, um, we're talking about um, sexuality in the kingdom. It's so like, in, in short, sex in the kingdom. But, um... It's not what you think. So it's it's it. We're we're gonna break it down. Uh, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna break it down over the next uh, couple of broadcasts. Okay. But today we're talking about love versus lust, and we're coming from First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Okay. Uh, so it's not long. So let's go ahead and read it. First Corinthians chapter thirteen reads: Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity or love, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For now, for we know not, for we know in part, and we prophesy, prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, 
I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Okay, so let's, I need to see. All right, so um, uh, before we get into this, um, since you're watching the broadcast, please share it out because somebody else might want to hear this lovely word because everybody's looking for, everybody's looking for love, but they might be looking in the wrong place and they might have love confused with lust. So, um, uh, part of me sharing this information with you is that you need to share the broadcast. Um, if you're in here on the replay, please put in the um, in the comments hashtag replay. However, if you have a question, please ask. I mean, you know, even asking the replay, I'm gonna get back to it. Okay. So, what's the what 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 does what does the Bible say about what love is? And then let's think. Now, when we go through these things, what the Bible says, um, what love is, and then and and then we have to compare. We have to compare. Now, look, because the Bible says first that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. So then these things should link up, and everything needs to go back to God, a divine mathematical problem. So anyway, so love versus lust. Love, it does suffer long. Now. Um, you can look at that in the point of view, say like if you were in an arranged marriage, right? Uh, you learn to love. Um, we're gonna be talking about that later in another broadcast. But um, uh, okay, on, until love, suf love suffers long that you know your child might be on drugs or something for a long amount of time or might be into a certain lifestyle or you want them to come to Jesus. Love suffers long. Love is kind in its words. Love don't take, don't have to take crap, okay? But it does take crap. You know what I'm saying? Because it suffers long, okay? But it, you know, the greatest example I can use for um, suffering long because love is not stupid, okay? Love don't just sit there. Love. David loved Saul and Saul threw javelins at David, but David did not turn on, on Saul. What David did was move out of the way of javelins. OK, <laughs> so that's the best way I can describe like love, you know, especially especially in, in a long suffering love. Maybe had a chance to kill him in a cave, did he? No. Nope. So, you know, you, you, ooh, that's why, you know, who David, he just he's he, he's he's a lover of God. And, um, you know, that's why God say he's a man after his own heart, because God is a lover. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love versus lust. OK. But um, lust, it ain't gonna, it, it ain't gonna suffer long. Lust gonna wanna get, lust gonna wanna get with you. Night one, lust gonna not wanna wait. Now, some of us, we might be in, in a, you, you might like a person and really wanna be with them, but you have a, you have a lust where every time you see them, you wanna be with them. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to differentiate you know what these things are but let me tell you something about uh lust 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 is not gonna lust is not gonna suffer lust is not gonna suffer long lust is not gonna wait lust to go out and find some somebody in any and uh, to to satisfy the need because lust is hungry lust is uh lust is animalistic you know what i'm saying my dog got this the perfect brownie brownie gets his <laughs> Okay. Anyway, so we're talking about love versus lust today, y'all. So it says, um, so, and it says, um, let me see, let me tell you the exact verse. It doesn't, um, uh, vaunt itself up. It suffers long. Okay. It says it doesn't behave unseemly. Okay. You know, uh, there's like, uh, some women who, who, in an argument with someone with 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 their with their mate, and some men do the same thing. So I've seen it. Oh my God, I will. But anyway, I'll go to somebody's job and start something. Or I'll drop them off um, at their job, hollering at them. You know, you're supposed to leave somebody in a good day. You know what I'm saying? So you you know you don't wreck people' nerves. So love is calm as opposed as opposed to 
I'm going to be hurt. Look, we don't got, I want to settle this now, even though, I, you know, you got to be the word to make the ends meet. Love, see, that's what lust do. That's what lust do. Lust is not calm. Um, love does not, it does not envy and um, it doesn't act out. It's not vain or, and it's not selfish. Okay. Lust is vain and selfish. Lust will have you, lust will have a person, uh, lust starts in the mind, right? So then it'll have a person go into an action of what the sinful thought is like, like for instance, rape, rape starts out as a lustful power trip. You know what I'm saying? Or because that person feels uh, some kind of inadequacy in themselves. You know what I'm saying? And then they have to empower somebody else. But it began with the lust of, uh, of the thought that was in their mind of what they either were lacking or wanted to empower. So, um, yeah. So, and um, it says, let's, let's see, let's, where's the scripture? Where's the scripture? Because I like to say the scripture. Okay, it says love rejoices not um, in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. It um it don't behave unseemly, seek is not our own. It isn't okay, here it is, is not easily provoked and thinketh no evil. Don't you know lust will incite uh like uh people don't always think of lust as something that's like <gasps> yeah. No, no, that's not that's not just lust. People have a lust for war. Okay, so they'll incite a riot. Okay, they'll incite a fight within the home. Lust does, those are the, the concept of lust starts in the mind. You know what I'm saying? That's why we have to have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is love. Okay, um, um, lust also keeps soap opera like secrets. I heard this, I think it was on, um, Dorothea's uh, one of her broadcasts, oh, oh, or one of her posts where she was saying um, she's an advocate for domestic violence. Um, she was saying, um, um, how can you have your child sitting at the same dinner table as their molester on Thanksgiving and stuff like that? And then some people had the argument of uh, it uh, disturbed, uh, why break up the family? And let me tell you something. Sin is sin. You don't do stuff like that. Now you can't have my child sitting in there. We not. <laughs> okay, we gonna keep it holy. We gonna. I'm gonna ask y'all to if something like that was to ever happen to pray pray for me because honey, I have my my own my own um my own thoughts or whatever. Say say you know I I do this or do that. But, you know, you got to take on the mind of Christ, but then you don't still have to have your child sitting at that table with that person that done done stuff like that to them. Okay. And it says, um, okay. And so instead of keeping, and, and then it says uh, that uh, it seek is not her own. Love don't seek her own revenge. Lust seek, you just got to, you got to lust for war once again. Um, you, you, now you're lusting at the, now you're lusting at the war. You, 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 you want revenge, no matter how small the battle, you've got to get revenge because they said this and they, you had to pop off, but you call yourself a child of God. And sometimes I'm talking to me because I've gotten better, but I still got work to do, honey, honey. Listen, so it's like you, um, but, 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 but love don't seek her own. Love knows that because love is of God, that God is the God of, he is the God of vengeance. God will avenge you. Now, the greatest revenge that somebody could get is say like they was talking about you and how you preach and everything and God ain't real and blah, 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 but then they have a road to Damascus experience. Isn't that like the greatest, the greatest, the greatest uh, form of revenge that now, you know, they're doing the same thing you was doing? You know what I'm saying? That's the great that that let, let God avenge because you know you can let somebody live and declare the works of the Lord because they could have been that next Paul. You know what I'm saying? So let God do that, that. That's part of love. Letting God get vengeance. You ain't always got to say nothing, especially if you say you is a child of God or a child of God. Before I, my sister corrects me in the replay, <laughs> if you say you are a child of God, then you can't always you can't be seeking revenge. 
You know, he need to seek the face of God more. You know, Lord, help me. So, um, oh, I need my glasses back on. Because I kept, look, I told y'all I was going to be keeping a journal in, and it's got stuff in it. And yup, 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 yup. So, anyway, and my handwriting is atrocious. So, okay. Anyway, glory to God. Okay. Love. Okay. So then it says, um, let's go here where it says, and okay. Verse seven, uh, for love beareth all things, ah, all believe it's all things, all oh, taste and see when you say all taste it, taste it, hope it all endureth all hallelujah. Put it on your mouth. Love, it, it, it covers a multitude. That's what it says. It covers a multitude of sin. It, co it, co it does all these things. You know what I'm saying? But it don't seek revenge because revenge is for the Lord. And, and God have his plan for people. And if they don't want to accept it because he said he was he going to give everybody a chance, you don't accept it, that's on you. But however, this is a thing. Okay, so let's let's break it down. Okay. What do I remember? Love bears all things. It stays when the going gets tough. That's why part of the marriage vows. That's why part of the marriage vows are uh, for better or for worse. You know. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay, and it says, "Love, love believeth all things. All things, every word that come that proceeded from the mouth of God, because love is God. So that's what love believes. Love believes that you can make it. Love believe. Love believe you can be redeemed. Love be, love believe He can pull you up out of the miry places. To, are you gonna reach out your hand for love? Okay. Am I? You know. And then there's when I say there's levels to this thing. When I say that, because today. You might be able to handle it, but tomorrow, you, this is why we communicate and fellowship because you might need somebody. That's what love is. So to bring my point in, love versus lust, love, lust is a fugitive. It's a doubter, it's mundane, and it's a vagabond, okay? Um, the lust, the thoughtful lust of, of, of whatever, whatever Cain did with his best, but he did not bring his best to God. So his love or, or his, uh, philantia, I think that's how it's uh, pronounced. His, his philantia love or love of his self is, is, uh, it, 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 it is, 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 a, is a lust is, is really actually a lust. Because it turned it lust to turn you into a fugitive. You just lusting once you done once you done um had a happy ending, you're gonna run. No matter what the happy ending is, L you know, lust I tell you, um, this person can pay your rent till you get till you get up. You don't really like them. See, I always thinking it's sex when I was talking about sex last time. But anyway, uh <laughs> Uh, and I have you be a fugitive to to a biz, to a business. I uh, I think I talked about that. Um, it'll have you being a fugitive. You're you're there until until the going gets tough, and then you run. You know what I'm saying? Um, those those uh big time those big time uh oh those big time people um who who get all the Ponzi schemes, a vagabond, somebody who just can't stay settled. You know what I'm saying? That's what lust is because you're running to and fro. Lust makes everything mundane, okay? When it's all over, once you done got what you want, your happy ending, everything becomes mundane. But in love, love grows. Love grows and it's not mundane. And it's not, it, the lust always have you thinking because of what you're doing that somebody else doing something. But love... Believe it that you, you you this is this this is this is my friend this is my man this is my family and 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 and, and no matter what it's going to work out so that's sort of all are the difference differences that you know I was in my little studies I said I'm just gonna go on with the difference between love and lust today so um I thank you guys for joining why you got an upside down head auntie <laughs> girl. <laughs> you know what? The, the 
them, them Stevens, them, that's them Stevens right there. But anyway, <laughs> glory to the Lamb. Thank you guys for joining me. We will be talking about more sexuality in the kingdom. It's it, it sexual act actually, sexual actually, because we got to break down what this stuff is. You know what I'm saying? And um, we are going to be talking about there is a difference. There is a difference between men and women. Um, there, uh, that's why God made them. Uh, us. Oh, Lord. I'm talking like I'm an alien stranger here. <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm done. The corny jokes are over. I promise y'all. They're done for the day. And I'll be back. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>